There's a better day of coming, hallelujah, better day of coming, hallelujah. Where we're excavating right now is the, is the trash pit. This is a downslope trash deposit where slaves are throwing the broken refuse from the household. And it makes sense this downslope because it's away from the yard, away from the house. Looks like we've got a little bit of a pin there. It's pretty cool. I swear I didn't put that there before you guys <laughs> A lot of times people get focused on the fourth president of the United States, America's first first lady, Dolly Madison. I'll move over to a foot and a half. But we know that at any one time there would have been 100 enslaved community members living here and it would have been children and grandmothers and fathers and all kinds of multi-generations making this place possible. This is pretty interesting because it's indicative of you know, either women sewing out in this area or just being present um, out here in the field, uh, which is which is pretty cool. What we're trying to do is understand three different aspects of the site, where the structure is, where the yard area is, and then also recover trash deposits for the household items. It was abandoned in the 1840s. It's basically been untouched. Every nail, piece of glass, ceramic that we find, we have the utmost certainty it belongs to the folks that were living here, which were medicines, uh, enslaved workers. Way over in Egypt's land. This is the South Yard domestic quarter complex at Montpelier. This would have been the homes of all the domestic servants that worked and lived in President Madison's house. We started the excavation process with the understanding of an insurance map that was drawn up in 1836 that laid out where the majority of these buildings were. The guy who came out to draw the insurance map was a little bit off in his dimensions, so the archaeology really bore out the true locations of some of these buildings. Proximity to the house is really shocking to people. People lived in each other's back pockets. When Madison was in the house, maybe writing his notes from the Constitutional Convention, he would have smelled the fires, he would have heard the cooking, he would have heard the children. Give me your eyes, give me your peace. It was a very integrated society in some ways, and yet also very, very separate. And you can see that juxtaposition here at Montpelier. Let's go inside here and you can take a look at some of these architectural features that would have been here. They were duplex quarters, so there were two separate dwellings here for two separate families with a central chimney with a hearth on each side. Anywhere between eight and 16 people might have been living in one of these structures, probably a family on each side. They had sash windows, which we know from the immense amount of window glass that we found through the archeology. span But that's not what life was like for the people who worked and lived in the craft complex or, or further afield in the field quarters. Here, there's no window glass. Window glass is something typically that an enslaved household is not gonna invest in. We've located two structures and possible possibly evidence for at least two or three others. You would have had maybe six to eight people living in each one of these houses. So you're talking about you know anywhere from 35 to 50 people. This project is a four-year grant. It was funded by the National Endowment for the Humanities and it's focused on comparing the households within the enslaved community here at Montpelier. We first found this transfer print pattern in what's called Dolly's Midden. It's a trash deposit just down from the mansion. This ceramic was throughout the slave quarters. We're thinking that it might be a way of maybe perhaps getting rid of the evidence of the breakage of a vessel. This kind of decoration is something we don't find in any of the Madison household deposits whatsoever. This is an item that was being purchased by an enslaved individual for their household. Before these timber structures were built, this was a, a very pristine but very false landscape. And with the archaeology, we've been able to rebuild a far truer landscape and we hope to be able to continue that with the craft complex and the field quarters. Knowing the story of James and Dolly Madison, we, we know a lot from letters, from people writing about them, but there's this much more intricate and in some ways much more interesting and a fuller American story when you can use archaeology to reveal what have been these hidden lives. There's a better day coming, hallelujah, better day coming, hallelujah. For we don't feel no ways tired, oh, children's hallelujah. For we gonna all shout glory when this world is on fire, mm -hmm. oh, glory, hallelujah. For we don't feel no ways tired, oh.